morning here in Harambe. We do say twin day and that means let's go. So down below everybody, my name is Kimmy and I'm going to be your safari guide here today out on the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now if you take a look above your head, you will see an animal spotting guide. This is going to help us to identify some of those animals that we may get to see out here today. But do keep in mind, they are free roaming. Chances are, we may not get to see them all. But you can see there are several things to see. But I'm going to start over here on the left and then move to the right. Over here we can see this brownish gray character and this is a greater kudu. The greater kudu are the second tallest antelope in Africa. And then we have these orange characters. These guys are bongos. Bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest for they are rarely ever seen. If we look over here next to the cliff area, we can see a black rhino. Now black rhinos are one of the smaller breed of rhinos. They have a prehensile lip. Does anybody know what that fancy word means? It moves. Like it can grab stuff? Yeah, kind of. Like it acts as an additional appendage. Yeah. Helps them to grab food. It's like a hand, really, on their face. <laughs> but if we look over here, this is what we call a bloat. Or a group, group of, of hippos. is a bloat. Does anybody know about how long a hippo can hold its breath for? 20 minutes. Less than 20 minutes. 10. A little less than that. 8. 8 minutes. I find it impressive because I can't hold my breath for one. So, yep. a long time. Ah. Who needs coffee? <laughs> Me. Yes. Okay. Cool. As long as we're all in agreement here. But the savanna is home to some of those more famous animals here in Africa, like the giraffes, the elephants, the lions, and everybody does have their part to play. And each one of them is significant in one way or another. But what do you guys think is the most important animal out here? All of them. <laughs> All of them. I love that answer, but there's one specific one. The termite. Uh, the termite is the most important animal out here, and I'll tell you why in just a moment, because first I want to tell you about these guys with the big old horns. Now these are Ancoli cattle. They're also called Latusi cattle after the peoples who have domesticated some of these guys. But the termite is the most important animal out here, because when they're making their termite now, it's going to cultivate that soil. It's going to allow for different plants, different grasses, different trees to grow. And then the mound itself has the consistency of concrete and they can get upwards to 30 feet tall. So elephants will use those tall ones as scratching posts. And then these smaller ones can be used by smaller animals out here in the savanna to have a look into the tall grasses to make sure that no predators, like these hyena that we can see over here, are lurking around. Now, these guys are moving around a lot. It can kind of be hard to see them. But But termite mounds are made out of a couple of things. Do we know what they're made out of? Saliva. Termite saliva. Mud and dung. <laughs> that combination somehow gets to be super hard in the African sun. But that's cool. But now we can start to see these beside giraffe walking around. Does anybody know about how tall a giraffe can get? It's about 18 to 20 feet. That being said, how many bones do you think is in that neck? Five. A little more than five. Seven. Seven. The same number that we have, theirs are just a little bit bigger. And by a little, I mean a lot because one of their vertebrae is like 10 inches long. Ooh. Yeah. Oof. They're all going Baby down. giraffes, though, whenever they are born, get a nice six foot drop welcome into the world. <laughs> and as bad as that sounds, it's actually really important because it kickstarts that giraffe's lungs and it allows them to breathe on their own. Giraffes, though, do spend about 16 to 20 hours of their day grazing. Doesn't leave them a whole lot of time to do anything else. Coming up over here on the right-hand side, though, we can see this herd of white-bearded wildebeest. Now, <coughs> white-bearded wildebeest have some of the larger groups of migratory animals. Up to 1.5 million of them will migrate 500 to 1,000 miles every year. And then the small tan and white little guys that we can see over there, those are springbok. Springbok get their name from the ability that they have to leap or to spring six feet straight up into the air, and they can do that repetitively. 
if they're frightened enough, and that's called pronking. Oh, yeah. cool. Pronking. Oh, they're beautiful. Ooh. Where are you going? Whoa. We're gonna move real slow. Hello, beautiful. Okay. Does anybody know what a group of giraffes is called? Oh, a tower. It's a called tower. A tower. <laughs> it makes sense because they're kind of tall. Do we know how tall any of those babies are? When they were born? Five feet. Six feet. They get a six foot drop welcome and then they stand at six foot tall. <laughs> Wonderful how that works. But all elephants are going to go and eat wherever they please, but mostly wherever they can find food. This became a big issue for a lot of farmers. So we did some research and we found out elephants are terrified of bees. They hear the buzzing of the bees and they go in the opposite direction. So now, through a project called Elephants and Bees, these farmers are putting up what we call bee fences around their crops to protect them. And it's a win-win situation because now these elephants are going to stay safe because they're going to find somewhere else to eat. The farmers are happy their crops are staying safe and they've just gained an additional crop to harvest with the honey from the bees. And in my opinion, the most important, the bees now have a sanctuary somewhere to help rebuild their numbers because unfortunately, bees are endangered. So this does help to make sure they can continue to pollinate different flowers and different crops. Elephants, though, are what we call a matriarchal society. Do we know what that means? Women on top. Yeah, they're led by an older, more dominant female. It only makes sense, though. They kind of boot all the men out when they hit maturity. But that's not going to happen until about 13 to 15 years of age. It is for these large ivory tusks that these guys are so heavily poached. Now, does the shape of their ears remind you of anything? Do they look pretty similar to the continent of Africa? Uh, sure. Yeah. Huh. So that's one way that you can tell that these are African elephants, other than the fact that you know we're here in Africa. But a few flaps of those big old ears is going to help to bring their body temperature down by up to 15 degrees. Flamingos. flamingos! These are greater flamingos. A group of them is called a flamboyance. Maybe we don't see any rhinos because they're hiding from this cheetah over here. Cheetahs are the fastest land animals. Do we know about how fast they go? 70 miles an hour. About 65 miles an hour. <laughs> but up ahead we have a Kofi rock formation. Now who do we think lives here? Lions, Simba. Do we know what Simba means? Lion. Simba means lion. <laughs> yeah, lions love these Kopi rocks because they can use them to bask in the sun or to have a better vantage point of the savanna for whenever they're doing their hunting. She's hugging that rock. She's straight up like, this is mine. I love it. When are lions more active, though? Night. At night. Do we know why? Their vision is the best. So they're going to rest for about 18 to 20 hours every day, and they're going to hunt at night. But it's the females that do that hunting, then the male's going to stay with the cubs in the territory to protect them. Now, are they white? No. No, they're not. They actually get their name from a mispronunciation of the Afrikaans word vite. Vite means wide, and you can't really tell from here. That was cool. Okay. <laughs> so, these guys are one of the larger breed of rhinos. So, about how much do you think they weigh? About uh, three to five thousand pounds. That's what was charging at the other three to five thousand pounds. Oh my. Just say it. A group of them like that is called a crash, and I find it kind of mean, although it's really fitting because they actually have really bad eyesight. So they run into a lot of things. They mostly run into each other. Heading into Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. 
think we'll see any gorillas on this trail. Well, the name suggests that we will. Oh, this is us. When it says one guess, So, back to the safari that we just took. Um, we saw giraffes. We saw giraffes. Sarah's favorite. Oh, I love giraffes. And uh, that's one of the other things is why you do it multiple times is you'll see different animals. You'll get different information because every driver is a little bit different. Uh, so, yeah. It, uh, it was a lot of fun the second time. Yeah. First time was good, but we saw more animals. But the first time we got to see the lions roar. So, yes. every trip's different. 